Hi everyone and welcome to the next Earth Science Review video. This video is going to be a quick overview about the moon. Here we go. So the moon formed from some sort of impact from a planet-like object that hit the Earth at a glance and essentially sent part of the Earth into space and it formed the moon. A little fun fact about the moon is that the rotation speed is equal to its period of revolution which if you can look at this picture the red side of the moon is always facing the earth so we actually only see one side of the moon at all times this is given to you right here on the reference table on page 15 you could see right here the period of revolution of the moon is equal to its period of rotation this is why we always see the same side so that's given to you now there is another number 29.5 days which you're gonna have to remember this is how long it takes the moon to go through a full cycle of its phases like from a new moon to the next new moon so those numbers are different these are a uh, this is an image of all the phases of the moon at different spots on the planet so essentially really quick if you're standing here and looking up at the moon this way you only see the half that's towards you so it would be this half that you would be looking at so you would be seeing all darkness which is represented here by the image new moon the moon's revolution is counterclockwise so the next image would be here waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous full moon waning gibbous third quarter and waning crescent back to new moon so counterclockwise so you should be able to identify all the phases and what the phase would look like based on where you are standing on the earth now make sure you pay attention to what side the sun is on because as you could see by this picture the new moon starts at the right side and it goes up to waxing crescent then first quarter waxing gibbous when I put the sun on the other side like in this picture and I'm standing here and I look up at the moon it's full I put the sun on the other side also gonna move counterclockwise so the order is not gonna look the same as it would in the picture where the sun is on this side it is the same order but it's not gonna be in the same spots so just pay attention to that these are the moon tides the tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon so as the moon revolves around the earth the tides will sort of change position the spot closest to where the moon is is going to give you a high tide there is also a high tide directly across from that on the other side of the planet which leaves the top and the bottom as the two low tides now when the moon is in this particular position between the sun and the earth this would be a new moon phase we call this a spring tide and the reason it's a spring tide is because the sun the moon and the earth are all in a line this gives higher high tides and lower low tides this could also happen if the moon was over here this would be a full moon so spring tides will give you higher high tides and lower low tides and it happens at new moon and full moon and on the other side if the moon is up here at third quarter or down here at first quarter you would get higher low tides and lower high tides and that's because the moon's trying to pull the water one way and the sun is over here trying to pull it the other way so they're sort of like uh, canceling each other out sort of and these are called neap tides so neap tides happen on first quarter and third quarter and cause high low tides and low high tides now back to the spring tides over here since the high tides are higher and the low tides are lower this is going to give you your highest or greatest tidal range because the water is moving a lot in terms of its height and neap would be your lowest 
tidal range because the water level is not really adjusting that much. These two diagrams represent eclipses. The top shows the order of a lunar eclipse because the moon should be passing through the shadow of the earth. And the bottom shows a solar eclipse because if you're standing here on the earth and looking up, the moon would be blocking your view of the sun. So eclipse means to block out. And these are the diagrams that you're going to need to know. Eclipses don't happen every month because the moon, as you could see, its orbit is a little bit tilted, about five degrees compared to the plane of the Earth's orbit. So since the moon's orbit is tilted, we do not get eclipses every month. All right, let's do some practice questions. Again, if you've watched my videos before, you know, pause the video, try to answer the question, and then see if you get it right. Number one. Base your answer to the following question on the graph below and on your knowledge of earth science. This graph shows the water levels in feet for a tide gauge at Montauk. Um, so on Long Island from that date to that date. What causes the water level variation pattern shown by the graph? AKA what causes the tides? So what's happening here is the tides are changing over the course of a day and a half. So the day and a half, the day is caused by the rotation of the Earth, and the tides are caused by the gravity from the moon. So your answer is D. Number two, which moon phase is observed in New York State when the moon is located at position F? So in order to do this, I'm going to draw a person on the planet right there and I'm only going to show they only are going to see that part. They're not going to see this back half of the moon. So to this person, the left side is three quarters lit and the right side has a little sliver of darkness. So if you look at A, the left side is three quarters lit and the right side has a little sliver of darkness. This is your answer. This is a waning gibbous. So if the answer was B, which one would it be? That would be when you would pause the video and try. So the answer would be location C. This is first quarter. What about C? What letter would C be? Hopefully you said location G. That's third quarter. And where would D be? This would be location B. That is a waxing crescent. All right, here we go. Number three, a total solar eclipse. You should automatically know in your head that a solar eclipse happens on a new moon. So that's just a little tidbit of information. A lunar eclipse happens on a full moon. Which diagram represents the positions? Well, for a solar eclipse, we want the sun to be blocked. And it's blocked by the moon. So which picture shows the moon blocking the sun from the earth? That would be this one. Which one of these would be a lunar eclipse? Anyone know? Oh, good job. B is a lunar eclipse. Hope you actually got it right. Number four. Which statement best explains why the same side of the moon is viewed as the moon goes through its phases? The answer is the moon's rotation equals the moon's period of revolution around the Earth, D. It's got that equal period of rotation and revolution. I just want to give you a little test taking strategy. If you see a picture like this on the test, guess what? This shows all the phases of the moon and they're all correct. So if you're struggling on the phase of the moon, flip through your test booklet and see if there's a diagram like this because that'll help you answer a lot of other questions. Eclipses do not occur every month because the moon's blank. Good job. The moon's orbit is inclined or tilted compared to the Earth's orbit. 
the rate of rotation is 15. This is the Earth's rate of rotation, so that's wrong. Um, period of rotation and revolution being the same, this causes the same side of the moon to be facing us, but it's not the reason why there's no eclipses. And the period of revolution being 27.3 doesn't affect eclipses. Number six, the diagram below represent tides at four different positions. Which one shows the moon's position that will produce the highest high tides and the lowest low tides? If you see highest high tides, lowest low tides, this is a spring tide. And that happens at a full moon and a new moon, so you would pick that one. A, this is a spring tide. This is neither. This is a neap tide. And this is neither. Number seven. One complete cycle of phases takes approximately one what? It's, I like to remember the phases as about one moonth. Get it? A moonth? Because um, the phase of the moon takes about a month to go from a new moon to a new moon. Or a full moon or a full, to a full moon. Or a waning crescent to another waning crescent. It's about a month. And the last question. At sunset on the following evening, the moon will be located at what position? So right now it's at B. Every day the moon rises 50 minutes later than usual. So this is showing sunset. So the moon's sort of going down this way. So the next day, since it rose 50 minutes later, the moon is pretty much going to be behind schedule the next day. It's running late. That's how I got to think of it. So it's only going to be at A the next day because it rose 50 minutes later. So it's running behind schedule. All right. So that's your little moon overview. Good luck on your astronomy test. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next unit.